This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, Memory Heart. And welcome back to another edition of This Might Get Weird. Yeah, and it's especially weird for us because we are recording on a Monday and not our usual Tuesday. And for us, that's weird strange and it doesn't mean anything to you guys you know why because we are so conditioned to work Mm -hmm. last minute we created every show we've ever taken on the road (laughs) spoilers to those who saw it i'm sure you could not tell that that show was made up within 24 hours well it was thought about a lot beforehand it was just executed yeah the the pre-show execution was handled at the last minute but that's kind of how i've operated in every creative project that's what i'm saying which is why it's so interesting you're like such a thriving student now Thriving is um, so many deadlines. So many deadlines. Not the not the right word I would use. I get it done. I think mm. there's an ability to. I, we've said this forever that I feel like if I modified my work structure and system, uh, it would be a lot less stress on myself. A it's thousand just percent. Unfamiliar territory to do something early. That's to true. work on it ahead of time. Um, you might be noticing if you are watching this that Larry <laughs> is in my lap. <laughs> Yes, the, our producer is here La- on set. Larry is, who is Howard Stern? Robin. Mm-hmm. Larry is our Robin. Very much so. Look at this little stinker. So anyway, Grace. Yeah. You're going to Hawaii. Yeah. Tomorrow? That's why we're recording early. Yeah, we're leaving tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. And we're doing a little vacation, a little. We wow. haven't planned a honeymoon, which, you know. Oh, yeah. Was something that was up to us to plan. And we just like thought about again thought about thinking about it thought about planning it and then just kind of decided to take uh, a few days in Hawaii because we want to do a bigger thing but we just okay. analysis paralysis there's too many options of places Ooh, to go and I like to that do. terminology yeah when it rhymes that's how you know it's a true assessment of human behavior but the uh so we're going to go to Hawaii as like a little mini honeymoon. Oh God, I and I fucking love Hawaii. Uh, me too. I have zero love it. problems saying this is our honeymoon and seeing what kind of free shit we can get. We'll oh, wait. Are you sliding into DMs? Uh, no. Come on. Make me proud. I know. I should have. But I just it's too much of a hassle to try and market myself for free shit. So then instead, are you going there and on check-in being like, it's our honeymoon yeah. and see if they're going to send champagne and stuff? Well, they've sent a bunch of like this hotel more than any that I've ever booked before has sent out these like emails beforehand being like here's links to the concierge service uh here's all these different links if you want to book things in advance we booked a helicopter flight uh whoa yeah hold on Uh i'm I'm nervous for you i know i was like let's do it here we go have you ever been in a helicopter besides the one we took through the grand canyon on hey usa i don't think so uh only the one in alaska again hey usa no that was a tiny plane well, you know, oh. <laughs> it doesn't really make that much of a difference, I guess. I think it does. <laughs> Helicopters scare the shit out of me. Yeah, the only one I've done is the one um, in the Grand wow. Canyon. Yeah, so this will so, be different. So is this like over volcanoes? Yes. Or is it... Oh my God. This one, I your fiery to, death. We're gonna go. It's the one. <laughs> no, it's the one that goes to the volcano and the waterfall, the two most requested uh, vantage points. It's not the one that does the full island. I said, give me the Spark Notes version of these helicopter tours. I feel like this one. You're very good. I know you posted on Instagram today, and you're very good about living in the moment and then being like, "Oh, I should take a picture yeah. of this and that." I feel like you need to. You need to record this helicopter yeah, ride. I feel gonna, like we're gonna get back into. I really want to record some content, for lack of a better word. It makes me cringe, but I want to while we're there. But like you know, we've fallen out of. I think Elliot and I were talking about this the other day. Of like we had we we boiled up this like cynicism about mm-hmm. being content creators, and like we totally swung our pendulum the other way of being like yeah. I'm not gonna make shit just to narcissistically what? make shit. And be like, look what I'm wearing. Look where I am. Mm-hmm. And then I just built up this like bitterness around it totally. and it wasn't fun and so now i'm like it's okay to have fun and post content Grace, i love this yeah so i'm trying to have a healthier more positive relationship people can operate however they want and i'm just gonna have fun with it and see how that goes we'll see i talk myself out of things a lot of the time too so we will see but for I... now trying to ride those waves of like it's not that serious it's not big. that serious yeah. no i think it like it got kind of warped up together with just in the fact that it was You know, the majority of how we paid our bills was doing brand deals and it would be like, well, we do it on YouTube, but then you need to 
plug it on Instagram and yeah. then you need so when so much so you're making so much content so much content but then also when those things dried up yeah because like you know back in the day the A list celebs wouldn't touch it and now they're like <laughs> you know take yeah. these shit pills you know <laughs> um, <laughs> yes you know Courtney Cox has been all over TikTok I've noticed recently she's killing it and she's also like really good friends with Ed Sheeran. Have she, you seen that? And she also supposedly gave what's his face mushrooms for the first time. Who? Uh, the younger brother of the royal family, Prince Harry. Prince Harry. Yeah, that Courtney she denies, Cox. I guess, but it's in his book. And I'm like, it's in his book. Yeah. She can't deny that. I know. I'm like, that's actually a kind of cool thing to be kind of a rumor going around. That would be my bio on everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gave Prince Harry mushrooms. <laughs> um, no, but so when that kind of stuff started to dry up, then it became, uh. Well, I'm not doing this right, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little well, bit of that. It was also that wave of like Instagram became an industry for mm -hmm. in like literal influencers. Like I just want to post photos of myself looking a certain type of way and attract eyes to and I, it. And that was very um, opposite of, I think, what we were trying to mm -hmm. do. And so it just got like... I don't know. I got very overwhelmed with the environment over there of like trying to keep up in that way. And now I'm like, I don't have Fuck to keep it. up in that way. I'm going to do what you I want to do. You are but a married woman with a master's. Thank you. You don't have to. You don't, <laughs> fuck them. I know. But but that said, Elliot and I have like negatively conditioned ourselves to not take photos and yeah. videos as often as we used to. So we're having to like repractice. Like yeah. I have to be the one to be like, can you take a photo of me? Oh. Can you take videos of me? Which is such a hard, weird ask for me to do. Is he good at it? Because Chip, when uh, he tries. I, love you, I love you very much, Chip. But <laughs> if I hand Chip my phone and he takes photos of me, nine times out of 10, I go, absolutely not. These are... <laughs> these are I was like, not posting this. There's no way. Not one of them. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's he's pretty good when he like tries when he actually like tries to do it. Um, but it's just a matter of me reminding him. He's not not mm -hmm. purposely not doing it. We're just both not thinking of it. And then after the fact, I'm like, oh, God, I should have just like remembered to do that. Well, I am the photographer of my relationship mm. and definitely like every time we leave a place and we didn't take a photo, Chip is like, we didn't take a photo. And I'm like, you mean I didn't. Right. Yeah, exactly. What is this we? <laughs> exactly. That I'm, uh, yeah. So we're trying to get back into it I and not this. feel icky about it. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Guess what I did yesterday. Speaking what? of content. I recorded. I got to edit it when we're done with this. Yeah. I recorded a quick little cooking reel. Hell yeah. For Instagram. Nice. It was delicious. Did you? Okay. Are we in secrets? No. I'm going to okay. post it later. I Basically, I'm, I did a twist on the TikTok pasta. You know, What's the, the TikTok pasta? It's the, it's the pasta that went uh, viral on TikTok. Mm -hmm. It was like, you basically take a whole ass block of feta. Yeah. And cherry tomatoes and garlic mm -hmm. cloves. Cover it in oil, tin foil, and you put it in the oven for 30 minutes. Okay. And then when you take it out, everything's soft. You just mix it together. Like the feta gets really soft okay. and it becomes just like this cheesy tomato sauce. Oh, it's nice. so good. Okay. Sounds great. But so I did it. I did a twist. I okay. did a summary version. Okay. So I did the feta, yellow tomatoes, corn off the cob. Oh, hell yeah. That mixed it. And then when, and I did it with gnocchi. And when I cooked <gasps> the gnocchi, I blanched a little bit of kale, mixed it all together. So it was kale- Yellow tomato, corn, Damn. all of that. So yummy. And then I Ugh. like put a little cheese on top and then baked it. That sounds so good. And then I put a little ump and then I put a little cashew pesto on it. That too. sounds amazing. It's, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, think Chip came at the counter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like picturing it in my head. I'm like, the color story is right? fantastic with well, it. Well, I got, here's the thing. I got worried about not having a pop of red. Oh, uh, yeah. But the tomatoes burst. Mm. So that's why I went with yellow tomatoes so that the color story was pretty. Damn. It's just yellow and green. Maybe we're all waiting for your cookbook. We're all <laughs> anxious. Tell waiting. about a, a <laughs> list of 10 editors who have not passed <laughs> that I would be great at. So if you're listening to this, mm -hmm. go on my Instagram reel. I give it a lot of comments. Yeah, I'm having more fun making reels. It yeah. turns out making that content isn't as arduous as making a full YouTube video. <laughs> turns out that when you just hold your phone and do it <laughs> yeah. and you don't have to set up a fucking tripod. Yes. 
A hundred percent. They were like, this is better quality and better footage of the food itself than anything I've tried to set up for 10 years. Well, think about like back in the, this is our very special content episode. Hello. Hi. And I'm not apologizing. I always apologize when I get too far into one subject on this podcast. And guess what? It's our podcast. (laughs) Um, No, but I think about like back in the day when you were doing Daily Grace out of your apartment in Brooklyn and like what that camera prop like was it like a like an elf or like a nikon 2 like something like something an elf, <laughs> it felt like it an old little man propped up on a tripod and only could pay attention for 10 minutes at a time i know but then also there wasn't like the flip screen so right. you can see yourself in so, the monitor so like, many of my videos were out of focus and i was like good enough upload <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah totally <laughs> oh and now we could just like have a fucking red camera I know. Even still, I'm like, people's quality looks so much better than everything I'm doing. And I'm like, what are what are people doing? How do you light oneself? It's I know you can Google it and there's tons of tutorials out there. I just want someone to walk me through it. But I don't get it. Like I follow a lot of obviously cooking stuff on TikTok and it's all this just like gorgeous and like it's very ASMR. Like you hear the bowl. Yeah. And and I'm like, where are there tiny mics everywhere? Right. And how is it this well lit? Because I'm I'm getting corn off the cob yesterday <laughs> in my kitchen. And I've got my shitty Amazon $30 ring light that yep. I've had forever. A little tripod that holds a phone. And I'm literally hugging it <laughs> to cut <laughs> corn off the cob. And I'm like, how? This There's got to be a better way. There's got to be. That is the new tagline I have figured out for everything I've We're been trying to make. We're just infomercials now. There's got to be a better way. Yeah. But this is what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I've. Um, there was a point in time where I felt like I was keeping up with the technology advances and making content. And now I feel like I'm just analog to everyone else's very tech we savvy gotta system. We got to lean in. Yeah, I mean, it works for me. So that's what's happening. Try it for 30 days, they say. What's the harm in that? Well, that's just enough time to try it and forget you signed up for it. And then all of a sudden you realize that you've been paying for a streaming service you have not used since 2019. That is based on a true story. And that true story is mine. Well, luckily, I use Rocket Money because they started sponsoring this podcast. In fact, over 80% of people everywhere have subscriptions they forgot about. You could be wasting money and not even realizing it. Rocket Money helps you find those forgotten subscriptions so you can stop paying for ones you don't use. Y'all, I know you tried those AI apps. I know you got those AI paintings of yourself and you said, well, I'll just download it for seven days. You're about to be charged again, my friend, but not if you use Rocket Money. Okay, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Chances are you're one of them, okay? Rocket Money will quickly and easily find those subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just cancel. And Rocket Money is going to cancel it for you. Yeah, bitch, Rocket Money is your assistant. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorize your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used it, saving an average person $720 a year. So stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash TMGW. That's rocketmoney.com slash TMGW. Rocketmoney.com slash TMGW. I am telling you, I've literally saved hundreds of dollars a month. Oh, well, speaking of technology. Yeah. It turned on me when you came over. Oh, why? Oh, yeah. I came in and there was a little something... <laughs> I'm being like a little, it sounded like a doorbell ringing like bird it song. Was like, and it was so faint that it was oh, Larry quiet. hates it. Larry hates it. Yeah. It was quiet enough that I was like, is this in my head only? <laughs> right, or is, right, right. Because Mamer's not addressing this noise at all. <laughs> because I wanted to talk about it on the pod because I thought I was going to be all proud telling you what I did and then it, it turned against me. Okay. So last thursday i think it was Mm -hmm. chip and i were getting ready to go up to malibu yeah you had a cute day in malibu oh my god (laughs) did you know los angeles borders the ocean (laughs) i've heard things (laughs) i've heard things you texted me i'm in a car on my way to malibu malibu with two tiny dogs in hawaiian shirts i think i am living my best life right now (laughs) it's like 
<laughs> we were talking all this business stuff, and then you just like fired off, and I was like, "Got it." She is out of office for the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um. So I, well, just with that, we wanted to do a Malibu day because I feel like you know when Chip comes home, yeah. we get in our routine, we say we're gonna do stuff, and then I just want to like sit at home and eat food and hang out. You know, totally. Get like, that. Even tonight, we talked about bowling. As soon as he gets through the door, I'm going to say, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, I can't believe we're getting on a plane tomorrow. I'm still considering maybe we just lay on the couch. Yeah, totally. Um, do you have any couches on this flight? Yep. But so anyway, sorry, Burp. Uh, drinking seltzer. <laughs> so we decided to go up to Malibu and just have a day. And so I was looking up dog-friendly restaurants, but also there's like iconic spots, yeah. you know, where you can actually see the water. So there's this place like Joffrey's. Yeah, yeah. And so we went and, you know, had espresso martini brunch and the dogs were on the floor getting admired by everyone. Uh. It's one of those places like we pull up, we street park. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't this could be fifty dollars. <laughs> right. Like, you for know, for valet. I mean? For yeah. valet. Like, let's not. Let's walk an extra twenty yeah. yards. So we did that. And as soon as we pull up, like a red Corvette with its top down pulls in <laughs> with an old man. With like a black curly ponytail. Perfect. Sunglasses and hat. And so we're sitting there. We had the best time. It's everything I wanted it to be. And what's so funny is Larry David got a new collar that says his name and like Chip's number on it engraved. Yeah. And we were like, what if Larry David walks in? That's what I, I wish this was the story I was telling you. I know. He for, didn't walk in. For half a second, I forgot Larry David was his name. Larry's full name. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, Larry David was the guy. With the ponytail. I wish. <laughs> but that's not even the story. The story is, right before we were about to go, uh -huh. I couldn't find my makeup bag. Oh, okay. That oh, that's that's got to be one of the more frustrating things to lose. Yeah, I literally carry mine around with me everywhere like it's my life alert. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, mine yeah, goes yeah. in every bag everywhere yeah. I go and it's just become a thing. So <laughs> I couldn't find the makeup bag and I mean we looked all over and it's right when I was going to do my makeup in the car so it's right oh, when no. we were walking out the door. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those like oh fuck me and like yeah. you know you get to the point where I looked in the freezer. Do you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like where you go, something, it had to have been crazy. Yeah. Like, I either threw it away, I froze it, or, like, <laughs> it fell out of my car when I was getting it. Yeah. But, like, we could not find it at all. So then I, you know, spend 75 bucks at CVS just oh. to get, like... Essentials. The bit, Yes, to yeah. give myself, like, an outline of a face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, sh no shading, no anything. Just, like... I have eyes and I, eyebrows. Yeah, <laughs> I, am, I am a smiley face. So, anyway, long story short, haven't been able to find it four days, have, you know, gradually bought yeah. more and more little things. Found it today <gasps> in this very seat beside me, which means I was just putting on makeup before we <laughs> did the podcast. <laughs> And left it right there <gasps> it's so expensive like any makeup bag i don't care like i wear wet and wild and I, yeah. if i lose my makeup bag it's still probably three hundred dollars yeah it's pretty nuts i know if i travel and i forget stuff and i have to do a cvs run the it's worst. like this is sad i think that i can't <laughs> yeah. just like walk out with nothing on my face i'm like no i'll spend a quick hundred just totally. to make myself feel okay it's like buying all new utensils to make a meal yeah it's just like god so anyway what i did uh-huh the tiles you gave me for my vibrator. <gasps> yeah. I was like, wait, I have a pack of tiles that Grace gave me. Yeah. <laughs> and so I grabbed the tile and uh, and I downloaded the app and I was going to keep uh, a tile. Chip suggested this. He was like, you should keep a tile. You should keep like a whatever, an air tag yeah. in, your, in your makeup bag. And so I did it and I thought I had a program <gasps> and then I was so proud and I was going to tell you. And then as soon as you came in, the air tile was like... <laughs> we're right here we're right here it would maybe. not stop talking <laughs> and then literally hold on let me see allow tile to use your location only while using <laughs> only keep only while using anyway so then i google i'm like my i put in like my tile won't stop yeah. making noise right yeah. the first thing that pops up is reddit <laughs> and then on reddit it says help my tile's beeping loudly it won't stop it won't stop you know it tells me to yeah. turn off my bluetooth it won't stop the most like voted up answer is just, I had this exact issue. The only way to fix it is to take a hammer and smash it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would do that because that noise it was making is pleasant, but for a long extended period of time, suddenly not pleasant anymore. Yeah. Um, also, those tiles I feel like are pretty old. I know. There might I know. be some newer versions available now. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I, I opened it. It's actually just a ceramic tile. I think they might be expired by now, maybe. Uh, 
Uh, well, I'm glad that you tried it. <laughs> like, I was really like, this is brilliant. <laughs> and Grace is going to be so proud of me. And then immediately I'm like, it's just like, smashing it with a hammer, like perfect. Gallagher. Oh, man. Do, do we want to? Well, sorry, go ahead. I was going to tell you about my weekend. Oh, shit. Right. <sighs> duh. We saw art this weekend. Yes. We went to Cirque du Soleil this weekend. Have you been to one before? I never yes. have. Okay. We went when we were in London back in 2020. We went to one there. I forget what it was called. And I have been to one or two of them in Vegas. I went to the one Zumanity, I think it was called. It's the sexy That's the one. the sex one, yeah. And the two people next to us left halfway through because they were... <gasps> <laughs> they oh couldn't they didn't know what they bought tickets for oh the zoomanity and the host had like called them out you know the host that's this like sexy like uh ringleader but like overly sexy and is just trying to make couples kind of uncomfortable and yeah. he came to them and they both had like yardsticks of like slush and he was like <laughs> talking to them and the girl was like laughing and the guy wouldn't talk to him and then uh <laughs> after he did like a bit with them that was like very uncomfortable so he moved on quickly they left ha at the halfway point of he the show he made them leave yeah uh but the guy left the girl stayed there and then the girl finally left and he came by and <laughs> looked at me and the person i was with he's like i knew they wouldn't make it <laughs> it was Wow. So that was one of my other uh, memories of Cirque du Soleil. But we went to Corteo this weekend. Okay. Um, it's clowns, right? Which is, it's a, a clown funeral. There's the dream <laughs> clown dies and it's like his funeral procession. And it's the overarching idea is that this clown is like accepting death and like going through all of the is procession. Is children? That's my first question. <laughs> we, went, we went to the matinee. It was all children. Okay. <laughs> So first of all, my little brother, Tim, used to take like silks classes in Boston. Of course he did. And so I'm talking to him about how I'm going to the show this week. And he's like, which one? We've seen a bunch of them because we had circus friends at one point. I was like, <laughs> casual, normal thing. Yeah. I say this as my sister-in-law is a professional yeah, clown. exactly. So. And uh, yeah, clowning is somehow weirdly in both of our ethers. A lot. <laughs> so I said, Corteo, he goes, oh, that one might be my favorite one. It's like peak whimsy. There's one part of the show I can't wait to talk to you about. <laughs> That's all he oh says to me. And I go, oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Were you stoned? So, oh, yeah. Okay, so okay. We had a little bit of an edible before <laughs> oh, we left. Yeah. Um, not enough to be weird around children, because I assumed that there were going to be kids there at the matinee, because we were like, we're not going to the late one. We're in our 30s now. Yeah. We can choose to be done by 530. <laughs> and... First of all, we go, we buy every snack that's available at this Ooh, concession stand. Were there good ones? I'm talking, we got pretzel, hot dog, nachos, yes. popcorn. He finally got his hot dog. Finally got his hot dog. Yes. Uh, ate it before he even sat down in his seat. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, a key part of a good hot dog is keeping it hot. Exactly that. Um, so we sit down, the show starts. It's beautiful and abstract and whimsical and just like in your <laughs> face, Cirque du Soleil immediately. I'm on guard. Because I'm like, there's one part in this show that, that Tim, Tim has said. Nothing more. No other. So every bit that comes up, I'm like, this one's a little weird. Maybe this one's it. They yeah. come up, there's like a golfing scene with an oversized golf club. And like the <laughs> head is like one of the performers. And it's going meep, meep, meep. And like moving back and forth. And I'm like, this one's a little weird. Doesn't seem to fit. Maybe it's this one. <gasps> and, I want and a camera on you. I couldn't believe it. Well, also, the little there was a little uh, girl with her mom. Two little girls and their mom in front of us. And the little girl in front of us was filming the show the entire time with her mom's phone. Start to finish. Almost the entire show. What? I try to take a photo of this girl filming the show. My flash goes off. <laughs> <laughs> crawl into a hole and die oh, for no. about 20 minutes of the show oh jeez uh he comes out upside down on a uh, bicycle they're jumping on beds yeah people are doing all kinds of stuff i'm like what is Lots okay, of trampoline. all of these are very up for the scene that tim is talking about <laughs> suddenly we see all of these helium balloons have been inflated on the side of the stage Okay. And out comes the main clown that is like uh, already dead and looking at his death march <laughs> in each of these oh, acts. God bless. He comes out with the helium balloons, like four or five of them massive, and they're all tied to a little person, a woman, <coughs> who is floating in the air attached to these oh. helium balloons. Oh my God. And Elliot and I both grab each other's <laughs> leg and we go, this is the scene. They come out. I couldn't believe this was happening. Oh my God. They come out. Floats it, down. She's floating. He's holding onto her legs. They oh. have a banter back and forth. She's very witty and comical. I have no idea what actually the scene 
what's going on. Is it in English? It's, it's in Italian in a lot of it. Yeah. So, no idea. Anyway, he, they're, they're doing a bit back and forth. I'm just wide-eyed, like, shoving popcorn in my mouth. And then a, he finally floats her into no. the audience and encourages the audience to push her <laughs> like a beach ball oh, no. through the audience. Her actual, body. her actual body. So this woman gets pushed into the audience, attached to like six helium no. balloons. No. And I'm looking, Ellie and I are like holding back tears. And we're looking at now adults of children, not sure if they should touch this woman. Who's now floating down to them oh, oh with her God. little, her feet are like waiting to be pushed. And she's like encouraging it. And she's like, thank you. Yes, literally Grazie. that. Literally, Grazie mele. Literally <laughs> that. And people are like trying to push her. <laughs> and it's getting, she's getting floated across. And it's What's so. What's the goal? Where is she supposed to go? I have no idea. I am. <laughs> I'm in uh, utter awe that this is happening. Uh, Elliot mutters uh, under his breath, <laughs> bring her over here, I'll send her to the sky. Because <laughs> everyone was so, like, sheepish of what to do. Like, if they were allowed to do this, if they should do this. Uh, Everyone's like, this is part of the show. Uh, but like, oh my God, it's happening now. And Elliot goes, bring her over here, I'll send her to the sky. <laughs> and I'm crying. Crying and eating popcorn just because I can't handle all the feelings that I'm having in this moment. Oh my god. She gets sent finally back to the stage. Yeah. It happens perfectly. I'll put the video up on our Patreon that Elliot <sighs> took because I, at this point, wanted to capture this. People were allowed to take their phones out, not on flash. I was so... Fucking mortified that I had a flash on that I wasn't even going to go near my phone. So yeah. Elliot took some video. I'll post it on our Patreon because I, it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. That was only the halfway point of the show. No. And then, oh, no. I text my little brother afterwards. I go, the woman attached to the balloons that gets pushed around like a beach ball in the audience. He goes, yes. <laughs> he goes, did you give her a little push? Like, no, we didn't. Oh, not. my I God. I couldn't believe it. The show was beautiful oh. and quirky and whimsical, and the acrobats are just so incredible. And the whole time, it's just, like, so cool and <laughs> transcendent. And I just kept thinking, how are these parents going to explain this yeah. to their children? Any of it, let alone the part where the little woman gets sent into the audience and gets pushed well, around. Imagine being 16 and going... Mom, am I crazy? I have a memory of pushing a little baby lady. <laughs> I was like, this is truly. Floating. Elliot, is this real? When we got out of the theater, like both of us pushed out of the door. <laughs> like we had just spent two years in a dark room and we're just like, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> we got wow. go somewhere. That was, that was literally like a fever dream <sighs> in the middle of the day. And then you come out and like there's a Clippers game <laughs> happening. Yeah, so it's yeah, just people yeah. drunk with like Clippers jerseys. And I'm like, you guys got to see what we saw. In there. <laughs> there's some real action oh, going wow. on in there. Oh, it my was God. So unbelievable. Um, if you're in L.A., uh, you can see the show. I highly recommend it. Okay. I'm so pissed oh. we didn't go. I know. I was going to... We had open seats next to us. There oh. were open seats everywhere. It was... Oh, go like this. You got uh, no, I, You just made me cry. <laughs> it was. That's how I felt. And the show oh. itself was beautiful. The overarching oh, theme it. is like this clown accepting his death. <laughs> and so it's just like... <sighs> it holds you in this suspended uh, feeling of all of your feelings. It was just wow. so whimsical and surreal, and I absolutely loved it. Wow. Yeah, we've just been talking about it all weekend. Um, I Congrats. Like, look at you look, doing culture, expanding your mind. Really? I was like, this is the kind of shit I want to see. <laughs> I want to see shit that pushes the boundary of yeah. art, but also has a sense of humor like she was having a sense of humor about it too like they knew what they were doing this show's been going on since like 2005 i think it started oh, shit yeah it started in montreal so i'm like looking at this going this isn't new but I, it's curious 
because we're in 2023 right now yeah. you could feel the hesitation of if this was like exploitative or something right like yeah. and that was the thing like, elliot loves that sort of tension when people like are collectively confused about like the right action do to you take. think she's been doing it all this do you think like this is i'm not her sure i kept trying to role? look up all of the performers there was like not a ton of easy accessible information about like all the performers in the show because also just the acrobatics itself is so impressive that yeah. i started looking up like how much do cirque du soleil performers make totally because they're and putting their ranges. bodies through it every yeah. single day and it's just fascinating because even down like elliot's family lives in sarasota there's the ringling school down there there's a circus oh. school in sarasota and so i'm fascinated by like how you get into that world of circus yeah. and like i was looking up um like how do people get hired in cirque du soleil there's like open auditions constantly Stop. that you can send a tape of yourself doing that you something. just go in and you're like hey check this out and like yeah, put your, and just like, you can like put your foot here yeah like here's my me and my 20 hula hoops doing <laughs> something crazy and, like, and yeah, they're like well, how do we work that into a show i think yeah it seems pretty like open ended um but this show i was looking at their facebook earlier they have like well, you're in deep i was you're in well, deep the facebook was the only place to get any information look i downloaded their almost downloaded their like cast bios cuz there was like a press kit that was the only way you could get information you got to do it i to need to know about it, this little lady but to download it you have to put in like what will you be using this press packet for and, and you're i was like, like no. read while high <laughs> I was like i host a podcast so it is press to get elliot um uh, uh, an autograph from this woman for his birthday yeah i mean she's called the clowness is her character oh, yes. um it was yeah it was really very very fun so we had an excellent weekend this wow. weekend yeah you Amazing. guys should really go okay see it. okay we'll and consider. don't tell chip that part. No, don't. <laughs> he listens to this podcast he's one episode behind i gotta get him there next week there you go Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. The reviews are in and Honey Love has come out on top for the best wedding day shapewear. Whether you're a bride, a guest, or looking for an everyday fit, Honey Love is your go-to for all things shapewear. They sent me their super power shorts and it is super, it is powerful and it's shorts. It's super comfortable. I actually wish that I had this for my wedding day. It's got actually targeted compression technology so it distinguishes between areas where you want support and areas where you need less compression and it's helping you sculpt and smooth from stomach to thigh by just offering the perfect amount of compression and you don't have to worry about rolling it down which is a no-no in the world of shapewear thanks to the flexible boning that's hidden in the side seams also it's a booty lifter it's got boost bands on the back of the thigh that give your bottom an amazing shape and it's got body suits oh they also have body suits with 360 degree bone compression so it smooths your tummy and your hips and it's got built-in bus support without underwire thank gosh it's shapewear that's actually comfortable but it doesn't stop there they have more than just sculpt wear they have incredible bras tanks and leggings for everyday support honey love is just as easy to put on as it is to take off it's shapewear that's not hard their products make you look good and feel good whether it's for a wedding an event or an everyday boost of confidence honey love is that perfect plus one so if you want to treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20% off, you can go to honeylove.com and use the code TMGW. Again, use code TMGW at honeylove.com for 20% off. I want to talk about how much fun I had on Friday. The <gasps> yeah. live stream playing Dream Phone. Oh, I mean, that was so, so fun. much fun. Talk about like collective like excitement yeah i have never it felt like we were playing a sport <laughs> same i haven't felt that tension in a while you guys if you never played dream phone which i owned it for the last six years and i've never played it and yeah. i never played it as a kid because it was like you know an expensive board game we yeah. talked about this on the live stream but i didn't realize that you know you're calling the boys on the phone and they're giving you clues on who has a crush on you yeah i didn't realize once you have what you think is the answer you have to call the boy it is and so tense and find out if you were right or not right so you're putting yourself up for rejection yes like i truly had the feelings of like in fifth grade when three-way calling came out and yeah. and i would like to my neighbor i'd be like lauren yeah. we gotta call scotty oh my god we gotta call eddie yeah we've gotta call all these boys and like find out if they like me but I'll don't tell them i'm on the other line yeah, yeah. exactly mm. and it felt like that but you guys we got it right we and got it right he said i like you a lot <laughs> 
children. And then we screamed our heads off. I, I truly felt like my team won the Super yeah. Bowl. Like it Same. was thrilling. Oh, but when, so I went to the dollar store to get decorations for the live stream to get some like, you know, balloons and all that jazz. And I just, tiniest little thing that made me laugh is there was like a very old woman that was a grandma yeah. with her daughter and they're like, 18 year old son you know just yeah. and he was like a big bored tired like looked like a linebacker just following his grandma and mom around <laughs> around the dog store like hated it yeah and and i just hear the, the grandma go oh look clonkers <laughs> and, and i go <laughs> um, imme immediate ears broke up and she goes they've got cl clonkers and the mom goes oh i've been thinking about getting some clonkers and they're like oh okay well let's look at these clonkers and then like, wait a second and then the son just goes they're called crocs <laughs> They do look like they should be called clonkers. And I was like, no, I'm sorry, but Crocs sold at the dollar store yeah. should be called clonkers. Yes, they should. It made me laugh so hard. The I wanted to follow them around the whole store and see what else she just yeah. had the wrong name for. What do you call this? Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm exhausted. I know this is like a shorter podcast. Yeah. But Grace has got to go to Hawaii tomorrow. I've got so much work to do and well, I'm just straight up tired. Okay, I can end on one okay. other thing. Okay, I, I love it. I other. ran out of stuff. Okay. <laughs> this is a crazy news story I just read before I got here. Um okay. Oh, by the way, speaking of news, Tucker Carlson, congrats. Right? You dumb bitch. You dumb <laughs> racist cunt. Yep. Fuck off. How fun is that? Love Who knows? It. Again, we're recording this on Monday. What kind of fresh hell might open up before Wednesday, before this goes live? Who knows? Okay. This is a crazy story that I feel like should be the start of like a, a show or a, a movie. Okay. A woman gets 21 years in prison for trying to kill her doppelganger with poison cheesecake. I... Did you see this headline? Was this in Germany? Uh, it was in New York City, but it's no. a Russian woman. Wait, what? Yeah. She, she got, tries to kill her doppelganger. Why? This happened in 2016, but I guess she just got sentenced, I think. Oh, okay. <clears throat> she was sentenced to 21 years um, for poisoning her similar looking friend with a sedative lace cheesecake, <gasps> then stealing her identification oh and other God. valuables. And this woman's like an, a con artist that had been... I, uh, like reprimanded for other things in other countries and like doing the same thing of like poisoning people and stealing their identity. valuables and identity. She brought a uh, cheesecake over to her beautician Olga's friend uh, <laughs> home in August of 2016. She ate two pieces of cheesecake and then offered a third slice to her friend who then ate it, felt sick, went to lie down, started throwing up. And then this girl just remembers like passing out and seeing her friend that gave her the cheesecake, like walking around her apartment. Stop it. The next day, uh, the woman that passed out was discovered it, unconscious in her bed with pills scattered around her body as if she attempted to kill herself. <gasps> And she was taken to the hospital for treatment. And then they were able to trace it back to this cheesecake Stop. from this woman who ended up stealing uh, when she went back to her uh, apartment saw that her like id was gone money was gone and like some of her expensive jewelry was gone wild wait so then did she she didn't point she only poisoned one piece and ate the other two pieces and then yeah. just poisoned one piece. how do you she, only poison one piece she it? made it so but it's also so i've never seen here's my first yeah clue, this is weird I've never seen anyone eat two pieces of cheesecake. Same. That would wreck you. That would throw me off immediately yeah. for a friend to eat like, two pieces your, of cheesecake. What's your cheese deal? Like, she was overly trying to show her that yes. this cheesecake isn't poisoned. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm having a second piece. Would you like a piece? I mean, like, if you want, the, if you like the cheesecake so bad, why'd you bring it over? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is strange for a friend to bring over cheesecake. And then eat most of and it. And then eat two pieces of it in front of you. I'd be I like, wonder if it was Junior's. Did she make the cheesecake? Right. You know, like there's so many questions to it, but I was like, what a specific, weird story wow. uh, about someone that looks just like her. Yeah, that she was able to steal this person's identity. But like people were able to trace this pretty quickly because the woman didn't die. She was able to be taken to the hospital and uh, they caught this pretty quickly and like, discovered that this woman, yeah, had done this a bunch of other times of like poisoning people. We need to update Clue. I know. Well, that's what uh, uh, Dream Phone felt like. We were doing mm -hmm. like horny teenage Clue <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> horny teenage Clue. Now that is a game I would buy and play immediately. <laughs> yeah. I've never played Clue. 
<laughs> but really, I I played when I was younger, not what, as an adult. What's so funny is I was given the Golden Girls version of Clue. <gasps> it's down in Palm Springs, and it's the case of the missing cheesecake. Oh my god! <laughs> People have been every- doing this forever. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will not be eating any. Be careful of anyone eating two pieces of cheesecake in front of you. No. I feel like that's a pretty pretty hard tell. Now anything. I'm not trusting, and Claire always comes over with baked goods and then and eats them. I trust Claire. Claire better not give me. You and Claire do look alike, though. Oh, <laughs> I recently have not been. She'll be like, I got us all this delicious <laughs> baked goods from Proof, and I'm like, I'm on a diet. I mean, She's look like, alike. God damn it, she'll survive another day. And I said, look alike. I'm like, you guys both have kind of red kind hair. Kind of red hair. <laughs> Hers is natural. Yeah. Uh-huh. And mine probably looks black right now. It always looks really dark the day I do it. And looks then right. I slowly ruin all my towels. Yeah. I'm just well, impatient getting the hair dye out. I just tried to put on fake tan this morning oh, for just in prep. And um, we'll see. I feel like it's going to just be handprints all over me when I get there. Don't do what I did in Palm Springs last week and what? get fake cocky that you were tan. Uh huh. And then you stay in the sun all day. And then it's like, oh, I'm roasted to a crisp yeah like i was i got that spray tan i went to palm springs yeah chip was like don't get cocky with that spray tan (laughs) and i was like i'm fine all day i was walking like the tin man no that's how i i realized like yeah this looks like i'm an outdoorsy type of person the reality is i never go outside you don't at all at all which is great for my skin but i do have the false sense of like security and be like son and me we're best buds best buds well i hope you have the best time thank you thank you how many days you going for we're going till saturday okay i can't wait to hear about the helicopter yeah we're doing a luau too I've never done one in Hawaii. So. Really? Yeah. And I can't tell if it's going to be. It's going to be great. I mean, it's going to be great no matter what. Yeah. Like Chip and I went to one and we were like, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> I like, know. That's how I feel. But It'll I've been be... to a different one and enjoyed it. So okay. yeah, we're just going People full watching. tourists. I can't wait. Yay. All Ooh. right. Well, I will say this got weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 